Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, uh, and it's time to talk about some very exciting news in the local cloud space. So Amazon Web Services uh, is clearly the global cloud service provide leader. It's one of the fastest uh, growing cloud services uh, in the world, and it continues to grow in the African market, a big strategic uh, uh, intent there by AWS. And I think with more regions requiring ultra low latencies with uh, AWS infrastructure closer to the end user, it really is uh, exciting to uh, see that these local zones are popping up. And if you play Fortnite, you know all about ping and uh, AWS does this through what it calls these these local zones. Uh, with the data center already in place in Cape Town, AWS has officially established uh, an AWS local zone in South Africa's mother city, uh, placing its compute storage and database and its other services uh, on the edge of cloud near a very large population. And that's coming to uh, Joburg as well. Chris Erasmus, country manager uh, for South Africa, commercial sector at Amazon Web Services. It's a very long business title. Uh, good thing we don't really do business cards anymore. Welcome to the show. What, what, let's start at the beginning here what exactly are aws local zones yeah, thanks michael and really happy to be here speaking to you today the aws local zones are essentially a new type of infrastructure deployment that's fully managed and operated by aws so customers don't need to incur the expenses and effort of procuring operating or maintaining infrastructure in the various cities that they operate in in order to support low latency applications and as you've called out, it places a compute storage database and, another sub and some other subset of services closer to large populations and industries in order to further support customer experiences. It also allows AWS customers to use our core services locally while seamlessly connecting to the rest of the workloads running in full-fledged AWS regions. But it offers the same elasticity and pay-as-you-go model that you'd find with the, with the region. And if you look at, I mean, you get availability zones, you get local zones. Uh, can you just talk to the differences between uh, a local zone versus an availability zone? Absolutely. So an availability zone forms part of what we call an infrastructure region. An infrastructure region, by example, we, we established and launched one in Cape Town in April 2020. That is essentially... A, a individual location, minimum of 20 to 100 kilometers apart, um, that has a fully fledged data center, one or more fully fledged data centers at each location, and allows AWS to deploy all of our services to these regions in order for customers to, to leverage our services. A local zone is a single instance that would be sitting in, in a metro or at a location that needs to be closer to customers. It offers a subset of services such as compute storage and database and allows customers to then continue to integrate with a full region in order to leverage the, the complete depth and breadth of the AWS platform. Right. Now, as I said in my introduction, if you play Fortnite, you know all about ping. It's latency. It's playing against competitors in Europe. They're, they're established right next to uh, one of these data centers. And when they press a button to fire or to build, it happens almost instantaneously. In South Africa, well, we're on the southern tip of the African continent. There's a bit of a lag. It frustrates gamers no end. Just why is this so significant for businesses, this idea of latency and for the South African market? Absolutely. So, I mean, if we think about the need for low latency technology or ability to support you, you've mentioned Epic Games. You, you think about a, a player that is sitting at the, the tip of South Africa or the African continent, playing against gamers sitting in other continents that are closer to the actual infrastructure. That ping would, would essentially create a delay and then being able to respond to whatever is happening in the game in real time. Another example would be if we think about a customer or an organization like Netflix. They, the world's leading streaming entertainment service. They have over 190 million paid memberships in over 190 countries across the globe. They create content at the edge in some of these countries in order to localize their content and their service offerings. But these individuals need to render 3D models and animations where they are located. Organizations like Netflix would then use our compute and our performance uh, or performance resources in order to process that data at the edge closer in order to provide a better experience and obviously a seamless experience where there isn't a lag in consuming these services. Overall, mm -hmm. if you think about a consumer, it's all about improving that overall quality of service and ability to leverage 
what these organizations are providing. And as anyone who's ever sat in a video edit suite knows, uh, you can spend hours rendering. It can be the most soul destroying thing because it takes so long. So to reduce that, I mean, you really are bringing a huge value to the end user. Uh, why is this so significant for the South African market? Are we talking firsts to market here? We, we know that speed and user experience matter in business. It's also a continuation of our investment to support customers of all kinds. We're committed to accelerating innovation by bringing cloud infrastructure to more locations in South Africa. And if you think about the pandemic, it is, you know, almost fast tracked and forced organizations to rethink how they support their customers, you know, their customers in different locations and in different ways. This essentially helps to enable those organizations to do that. And I'll give you a couple of examples. If you think about financial services institutions now needing to rethink their contact center experience for customers, dealing with longer queues, potentially introducing things like voice prompts. That is an example of something that, that would provide benefits. Another example is a local bank is leveraging our services in order to create a seamless onboarding experience for their customers, where they can just provide a selfie through the application in order to onboard and create a bank account. That is remarkable. I've I've used one digital upstart bank uh, that uh, asked me to provide a selfie. I think I know who you're talking about here. Uh, and, you know, this is really where we start to see businesses uh, realize the potential of cloud in its entirety, because we've spoken a lot about cloud prior to the pandemic. I think what we're seeing now is increasingly large organizations ripping and shifting their, their historical legacy systems, putting them in the cloud, and you get access to all of this compute power. You can throttle it up and down. It's kind of, you know, as and when you need. And in today's world, it means you can, you can be hyper flexible. You can design products and services that people want you know, almost overnight, uh, as you can dream them up. What successes have you seen in Cape Town so far? Because it really was a big marquee announcement that uh, that uh, data center in Cape Town. And then tell me a little bit more about uh, how you're going to try and move that into Johannesburg, which is obviously the next step. Absolutely. So we have tens of thousands of active customers in sub-Saharan Africa today. And the vast majority of these customers get the necessary latency required to support the application performance by running in their chosen region. Cape Town obviously being the closest one for South African customers as well as continental Africa. Um, and from that perspective, we want to continue to ensure that our infrastructure is closer to our customers and for our customers to be able to better serve their end users. The local zones will actually give customers the ability to offer single digit millisecond performance, which is again, designed to suit applications like real-time gaming, media and entertainment, which I've spoken about and also further enhance the ability to migrate core services to the cloud. You spoke about organizations lifting and shifting to the cloud and looking to modernize. In some cases, they need lower latency, that single digit millisecond. This will allow those organizations based in Johannesburg to leverage the cloud, um, utilizing our local zone. And that is a, a really exciting prospect in terms of timelines. Um, you, you haven't launched yet. I believe it's uh, more towards the end of the year. Can you just give us a sense of uh, the, the timeline to roll out and when businesses can expect the service? Absolutely. I mean, maybe just to, just to set some context, we have 16 local zones available in the US today. Um, late last year, we announced that we would launch in a further 30 locations globally across 26 countries. Johannesburg is one of those locations. We are in the process of building that out. The expectation is late this year. At this point in time, I don't have a date that I can share with you. Right, but it's still an, a clear indication that the South African market is an important market for Amazon Web Services. Uh, but can you just give us a sense of um, why that is? Because it's, it's nice to hear that we are still a gateway. I know there's a lot of negative news around South Africa, but this clearly indicates that AWS sees this as an important African entry point. Absolutely. Uh, AWS has a long history in South Africa. We first established a presence in Cape Town when we set up a development center in 2004. This development center still engineers and develops services, core services like our compute instances, as well as our storage in South Africa today. And we also launched that three availability zone region in Cape Town in 2020. So we see this as a continuation of that investment. And again, with many South African headquartered organizations having a presence across the continent, we see South Africa as that beachhead for further 
for further expansion mm. onto the continent. And I'm not sure how many people are aware of the Cape Town link in particular, a couple of uh, homegrown talents that uh, were uh, the driving forces behind uh, Amazon Web Services from a coding perspective. If you zoom out and you look at Amazon Web Services growing 30%, uh, 37%, I think, in the last earnings call, it was a slight slowdown. But listen, if you're growing anything 37% in this environment, it's just phenomenal. How is rolling out Amazon Web Services local zones across the world feeding into this? And what have the initial successes been? What have your learnings been in rolling these local zones out around the world? So firstly, I, th I think you touched on the fact that, you know, 37% growth year on year. Thinking about the size of the organization, I believe AWS is on track to to deliver around $72 billion worth of annual revenue um, this year. So again, 37% year-on-year growth on top of that large number is, is quite astounding. Around 90% of what we do in terms of development and engineering and products that we release to our customers is based on direct customer feedback. And local zones is no difference. We've taken feedback from our customers across the globe, understanding that they need to be, they need us to be closer to their, their customers and ultimately their developers in order to help them serve their own markets. Local zones essentially is, is core to our ability to roll out infrastructure quickly and close to our customers as they think about computing at the edge. So again, a critical way for us to get closer to our customers and help to innovate quite quickly. Yeah, and I mean, clearly, the, there are many companies who want to get rid of their on-prem data centers, uh, might also be interested in getting rid of their local data centers entirely. But the local zone then allows you to gain all those benefits of having your compute and your storage and all of that closer to you, to where you need it. And that's ultimately why this is, is so exciting. I think a great announcement. And uh, I certainly look forward to uh, it uh, arriving in Joburg. We always feel a little bit left out up here in Joburg. Uh, the Cape Townians seem to be getting all the AWS stuff first. So it's good to hear that it's coming here. Chris, great to chat to you here on Business Tech. Great. Thanks, Michael. Thanks so much for having me today. That was Chris Erasmus, Country Manager, South Africa, Commercial Sector at Amazon Web Services, talking all about uh, the rollout of Amazon Web Services local zones in Cape Town and uh, already in Cape Town, but coming to Johannesburg towards the end of the year. I think a very exciting development for local cloud users.